So now let's finally get to what we're supposed to start today. So bone tissue, so osteology. So that's the study of something, right? When you see that term, ology, that refers to study of something. So chondro means cartilage, but osteo or os, especially if you're using something like Gray's Anatomy or older anatomy textbooks, they actually use the Latin term for bone. So this comes from Latin. So when you see os, that refers to some sort of bone. So osteo means bone. So osteology is the study of bone. And again, if you're taking the labs, that's what you've been doing, osteology and studying the bones. Now bone is a connective tissue. Remember, it does fall with, with cartilage. They're both supportive connective tissues. So again, you have the specialized cells and the extracellular matrix, and then you have a connective tissue. So why are the cells and the extracellular matrix of bone? Well, again, bone or sometimes called osseous tissues. So again, if you see that OS something, that typically is a root word referring to some sort of bone. So osseous tissue is just bone tissue. And then osteocytes. So again, site, that root, root word meaning cell. So osteocytes are a type of bone cells. Then you have extracellular matrix. Again, extracellular matrix, you have those protein fibers plus a ground substance, and then you have a matrix. So you do, and remember, bone is a connective tissue, so you do have some sort of fibers, ground substance, and extracellular matrix. Now, this is what happens. So bone mineral actually starts off as something called osteoid, but if you just took fully developed bone, what would you see if you just took a cross-section of it and just broke it down into what's made out of? Well, the ground substance of bone matrix is bone mineral. So one major comp or substance you find is calcium phosphate, but you also find other calcium salts as well. I, like, do I want you to memorize the whole list of all the calcium salts? Not really, but just know that calcium and phosphate are two big ions that you find in the bone mineral. So this is like a very important component. So it's more than just bone mineral, though. The bone, bone mineral is the ground substance, but you also have a lot of collagen fibers. And again, collagen fibers, they're very strong. So what you have here is that you have ground substance, the bone mineral, plus protein fibers. But you also have like layers and layers of all this bone mineral and collagen. So the thing is that the collagen isn't just completely parallel all the way. It actually forms kind of like cross pattern. So it actually forms a kind of crisscross. So not only does it provide multi-directional support, it also provides a little support against twisting. And I actually learned this from a student who was doing fashion and design. But I think like when you have a piece of fabric or something, like they call it a bias cut. Like you don't actually cut it parallel to the fibers of a, of a, a woven textile or a cloth. You actually cut it where it's kind of actually diagonal because it provides more structural integrity. And your collagen fibers in your bones are kind of arranged very similarly. They're, again, not all parallel. They kind of crisscross to provide additional strength. So then extracellular matrix. So we have those collagen fibers plus the bone mineral, and we have a matrix of the bone. So we can, again, cal collagen plus the bone mineral and calcium salts. That makes up the extracellular matrix of a bone. True or false? The bones in your body are living tissue. So majority of you said true and the majority of you are correct. So th this is a common misconception, is, especially among people who haven't taken anatomy and physiology. It's like, well, what happens when someone dies and they decompose? What's left over? The bones, right? But this is the thing that, yes, the matrix of the bones are left. So things like the calcium bone mineral, that's left over when we die and decompose. But remember that Bone tissue is a living tissue. It has cells, and the bones are living. So it is possible for bone to actually bone tissue to die in our body, and that's when we call it necrosis. So the thing is that bones in your body while you're living is living tissue. Again, it's more than just the extracellular matrix, but also the cells that carry out the function of bone as well. So that that but the thing is that when we die and decompose, those cells are gone. But what's left? the extracellular matrix. And actually the collagen fibers will break down as well. But the minerals, they don't break down as rapidly. So that's why we leave by, behind skeletons when we fully, or when we, when we decompose, when we die. One more question. 
Ooh, I gave it away. <laughs> oh, well, like, this is a gimme. That's funny. Hilarious. All right, so remember, if there's a immature version of a cell, it's a blast. And if there's a mature version, it's called a sight, right? So if you have an osteoblast, that's an immature version, what's the mature version? It's in the brackets there. But yeah, so then that's what we have here. So again, if, whenever you have a, two cells, one is a blast, one is a sight. The blast version is the immature version, and the sight version, that's the mature version. So why do I get, talk about that? Yeah, it's a gimme question. Yeah, don't worry, none of these like account for or against your grade. All right, so again, you have the specialized cells. So again, remember, whenever you have a connective tissue, it's more than just a matrix. It's also about the cells as well. So the thing is that what are the cells of bone tissue? So there are actually four. It's not just one type of cell. So actually, there are four broad categories of these cells or four types of these cells. You have osteogenic cells. You have osteoblasts. You have osteocytes. And you have osteoclasts. So again, this is where you have to be very careful. Again, they all start with osteo, so that means bone. But again, this is where they all look very similar, especially osteocyte and osteoclast. They start with the same six letters, so don't get them mixed up. So what do osteoblasts do? So osteoblasts, what we have here is a cross section, looks like a transverse section of some bone. And then what we have here is the periphery. So osteoblasts, what they do is they secrete, initially secrete something that's very collagen rich called osteoid. So osteoid is a type of matrix, but it's not quite fully mineralized. So it's mostly collagen at this point. So it's still jelly-like. It does have some ground substance, but it doesn't actually have the calcium salts yet. So what happens is that the circulatory system has a lot of calcium ions and phosphate ions and all the minerals you need to actually make bone minerals. So once you make that osteoid scaffolding, now you can finally pour in that calcium salt, and this causes calcification, and now you have fully mature bone matrix. So in the neat mnemonic, osteoblast build. Again, osteoblast build, they both start with that blast build. Now osteocytes. So osteocytes, compared to osteoblasts, instead of being at the periphery and free to build toward the outside. These osteocytes, they're already surrounded by bone matrix. So can they really move around? Not really. And actually these little pockets are also called lacunae as well. So they're kind of stuck, they're held in place. But again, they're cells, right? So they're living. So because they can't really build or move anywhere because they're already trapped, what they're doing, their role is not so much building new bone mineral and matrix, but again, they're mature, so they're kind of like, think of it this way. The blasts are the immature, the young versions of these cells, so they're like, they're like construction workers. They're, when they're younger, they're more active, they're, they're able to do more. Whereas the sites, these are the more mature versions, so what they are, they take it kind of easy. They're not really there to build more bone matrix, and they're more to maintain their surroundings, because again, they're kind of trapped by all that bone matrix and all that surrounding them. So they're more about maintenance than building new bone matrix. So that's why I think about it. They're kind of like a little retired, they're a little less active, but they're still very important. But now they're just more about maintenance than making new stuff. So again, it's very similar to fibroblasts, right? So fibroblasts, these are the ones that secrete all those collagen and elastin fibers. Whereas fibrocytes, they're more about maintenance. Same with, or very similar with osteoblasts and osteocytes. Osteoblasts build, Osteocytes maintain. Now you have something called osteogenic cells. So gen, that's often the important root word. I think it's in Latin and Greek that you have gen referring to making something new, birthing something. Or if you've taken like French, like les gens, that means people, right? Or if you take Spanish, like la gente, that means people, right? So that refers to some sort of building or birth or making something. So osteogenic cells generate generation, same root word. So osteogenic cells, they generate. They are stem cells of your bone tissue. So osteogenic cells generate new osteoblasts and osteocytes. Now, how do they do this? 
So, hey, this is where you have to bring up that chapter or section on stem cells. So remember the two properties of stem cells. One, they regenerate, they renew. And two, they differentiate. They can become different types of cells. So here we have an osteogenic cell. And remember, if they're able to regenerate and renew, they're able to undergo mitosis and divide. Now, that's what we have with regeneration and renewal. So they're undergoing mitosis. But osteogenic cells, remember that with stem cells, they can differentiate and become other types of cells. So the interesting thing is that osteoblasts actually develop from osteogenic cells. So osteogenic cells can differentiate and become osteoblasts. But when, uh, once the osteoblast starts to build bone matrix and eventually gets surrounded by bone matrix, it becomes an osteocyte. So again, the osteocytes compared to osteoblasts, they're kind of trapped by all the bone matrix and they're more about maintenance. So this is the way you differentiate, you generate new osteoblasts and osteocytes. They actually need to be differentiated from uh, osteogenic cells. So we have osteogenic cells becoming osteoblasts and osteoblasts become osteocytes. But the thing about osteoblasts, can they undergo mitosis? They actually don't undergo mitosis. So again, this is a subtle, more a subtle but important part of differentiation. As the cell starts to get more differentiated, it gets harder and harder for it to undergo mitosis and create exact copies of itself. And osteocytes, they don't undergo mitosis as well. So if osteoblast dies or osteocyte dies, how do you generate new or how do you generate more of these or replace these cells? Well, what you do, remember that osteogenic cells, they can become osteoblasts and consequently osteocytes. So what do you do? You just make more osteogenic cells. Again, stem cells, they renew and regenerate. So how do you generate more osteoblasts and osteocytes? Just make more of the stem cells, the osteogenic cells. So osteoblasts, again, they make that osteoid, right? They make that osteoid that has a lot of collagen and then you have the minerals like calcium and phosphate that make a fully developed bone matrix. So osteoblasts build. Now you have something called osteoclasts. This is the fourth type of bone cells. And what I'm showing here is that they actually have multiple nuclei. So they actually have multiple, remember like a typical cell has one nucleus, but osteoclasts actually have multiple nuclei. So this is an interesting thing. Let's rewind a bit and talk about those macrophages I talked briefly about in chapter four, I believe. So macro, these are the big eaters. So again, what are they doing? They're dissolving things, they're engulfing things from their environment and dissolving it within themselves. So these eat pathogens, damage cells, and debris. But osteoclasts are actually related. They're special macrophages. So they're big eaters and they're in the bone, but they eat something. What are they exactly eating? So osteoclasts have multiple nuclei. Again, this is a typical H and E staining. So each of these purple dots, that's a nucleus in one of these osteoclasts. So why do they have multiple nuclei? Well, again, if most cells start with one nucleus per cell, then maybe multiple cells contributed to an osteoclast. And that's exactly what happens. So here we have a slight microfracture in a bone. So what we have here are all these little macrophages. So when you have an osteoclast, what happens is that these macrophages can fuse. And when they fuse, now their nuclei become part of a bigger cell. So osteoclast is actually formed, or if you've seen like the, was it like Dragon Ball Z, when they, they have two fighters and they fuse together and they form a new fighter. Same with macrophages, they kind of do that, but they're all big eaters. Now they're forming a bigger eater with multiple nuclei. Again, all these nuclei came from initial macrophage. So remember, macrophages are big eaters, right? So osteoclast is a huge eater. And what does it eat? It actually eats damaged bone. It actually eats bone material. So the thing is that osteoclast, they crush bone and consume it, and they dissolve bone matrix. So that's the important function of osteoclast. But now you got rid of that little fracture, but now you have a hole where that bone was. What do you do? Well, the osteo you don't call more osteoclast because again, otherwise it's going to eat, all, eat right through the bone. What you want is someone to build, right? And which of the four cells build? Osteoblasts build, right? 
So osteoblasts are going to build new osteoid. And again, osteoid is that collagen-enriched, not quite fully solid and set matrix. So that's the unmineralized portion, that osteoid. And then the interesting thing is that osteoblasts secrete, and again, those three letters, A-S-E, that's an enzyme. Alkaline phosphatase, or BAP, this is an enzyme that these osteoblasts secrete. And what it does, it kind of starts off that mineralization process as well. So it's not just about the blood, but you also have enzymes that help to crystallize and catalyze the deposition of bone mineral into the matrix. And then you finally have new bone. So again, you have the osteoclast coming in, dissolving and, di and crushing that old um, damaged bone. But now you have osteoblasts coming in to fill in the gap. So why reveal bone matrix? And if you have parents that, and again, they probably, if, especially if they like to watch channels like HGTV or all those home renovation ones, but, or there used to be this awesome show called Hoarders where sometimes they, these people would have like these houses and they let it go to, they fall, fall apart. But sometimes when they look at the drywall, it looks like this, right? So all this mold, all this degradation and all this like, it's rotting away. Now, when you have a house that looks like this, are you just going to put new wood and material and just on top of existing rotting material that's damaged? No, that rot is going to affect the structure. Even if you have totally new material, it's going to not form a, it's going to make the overall structure not as structurally integral as if you just tore down the whole thing and built it up new again. And that's pretty much why you have that osteoclast and osteoblast cycle. Osteoclasts, um, osteoblasts aren't going to build on an already existing damaged material. So it's better for osteoclasts to get rid of the damaged material and then have the osteoblasts come in and build entirely new material that's stronger. So yeah, osteoclasts, so another nice mnemonic, osteoblasts build, osteoclasts crush. Again, this is why you can't go by the osteo part because that means bone regardless. So osteoblast build bone matrix, osteoclast crush bone matrix. So osteoblast build and osteoclast crush.